Before this video starts, I want to let you guys know that my Patreon is linked down below in the description if you guys want to support me. If you guys choose to support me, you guys can receive monthly benefit files being coding files that we code here in the series. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I'll see you guys in the video. Hey, what is going on guys and girls? My name is Fusion Terror here. We're back again today with another video, and in today's video, I'm just showing you guys how to make sub commands to your Discord bot in Discord JS version 13. Now, sub commands are like commands, but you can actually add a second portion to it. An example could be an info command where you want to get info on either the server or a user. What we could do is then have a sub command being a second argument whether we want to get info on the server or on the user so i'm going to go ahead and show you guys in this video today how to make sub commands for your discord bots so with all that out of the way all links i show here in the video are going to be linked down in the description below for you guys to have easy access as always so with all that said let's go ahead and hop into the video so we can go ahead and open up on our desktop here our bot folder and then what we're going to do is go to the directory up here we're going to type cmd to open a new terminal window or command prompt window i should say within this command prompt you guys can do code space dot to open this up in visual studio code now in our last video I showed you guys how to connect your mongodb database if you guys wanted to use one to your discord bot i recommend you guys go check that out if you guys haven't seen it already and if this is your first episode i recommend you guys go ahead and start from episode one so you guys can follow along with the series for those of you guys who are new this is going to be an ongoing series so i appreciate if you guys slap the subscribe button so you guys can follow along with the series so what we're going to do is go ahead and make a new command in this video so instead of our pin command which we had in last video what we're going to do is we're just going to make an info.js command um, in this video, as always, we're going to be using the Discord.js guide, so I'm going to pull that up for you here. So we're going to be using the Discord.js guide. In this portion of this video, we're going to be using, if we scroll down, we're going to be going to the builders section, uh, where we actually use these uh, builders, or sorry, the Discord.js builders package to actually structure our command and whatnot. So what we're going to be doing in this case is we're going to be going ahead and using the sub commands portion or the slash command builder portion that has the sub command portion as well. We'll be going over all this in today's video. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into our pin command here, copy all of this and paste it in here. We're gonna go ahead and then change this name to the info for our info command and then change the description to say returns info based on input because really it's based on what you input here to get certain info back. We can then get rid of this col or comma on the end and then do an add, sorry, dot add sub command and then open this up and we can add a comma at the end of that right here. We can use sub command and then we can open this up as an arrow function here. Hit enter and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do sub command. We can hit enter once again here, hit tab and then we can do dot set name for the portion of the sub command that we're gonna be getting. So the, the name, so the name of the sub command is gonna be set to whatever we pass in here. In this case, we're just gonna use uh, the user, which is just fine, since we wanna get information based on the user opposed to the server, like I was telling you guys prior. Then what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna go ahead down here and do dot set a description. This is gonna be the description telling you guys basically what is this input that you guys are passing in? What is it gonna do for us? So a set description, we can open this up and then say, um, gets information of a member mentioned or we should say user mentioned because we're actually going to use the uh, user option afterwards we can change that to user right there and then what we're going to go ahead and do is we can go ahead and do a dot add user option right here then what we're going to do is we're going to do option we can open this up into an arrow function right here we can do option dot set name so then we can get that name of the option so the name of this is going to be set to target and then we can do dot set description just telling us basically what this target is and we're going to say the user because it is the user we're mentioning so now that we have all of that done we have a lot of brackets ending right here but we're good to go so what we can do now is basically go ahead and pass into the execute portion what we want to happen if we were to pass in the user portion but we're also going to go ahead and add another sub command because we want to get information based on the server if you were to ask the server as your sub command so the cool thing is this is we can add in multiple sub commands to this just by going and uh, doing this portion right here so go ahead and close this right here and then we can go ahead and do another add sub command uh, we can actually go back close this right here and then go back here and do another uh, add sub command right here except we're going to pass the comma in the end and just get rid of this comma right there then what we can do is go ahead and pass in another sub command an arrow function once again here and we can go ahead and open this up if we want to but in this case we're just going to do sub command hit enter once again dot set name and in this case the name of it's going to be the server then we're going to go ahead and do a dot set description so we can go ahead and do that right here pass this in as the description being the info uh, about a server or the server I should say since it's the server the bot is in and then what we can do is do dot add or we don't even have to add a user portion in this because 
we're not actually having to mention a user to get their information back. We're just getting the information of the server. So something we can do over here is then write an if statement saying if the interaction dot, and then we can do options since this is the options we provided here. So let me just go over this for a second. So we're going to the interaction options being the options we pass in to this data right here. And then what we're doing is we're using the method uh, get sub command, sorry, dot get sub command. What this is gonna do is then we can check if there's a sub command that is gonna be equal to uh, user since we named this sub command user right here. And then if that is true, we can go ahead and then open this up. We can do else if, and then check to see if interaction.options.get sub command is then equal to uh, server right here. Open this up. This is basically just checking to see which of the two we use, whether we checked to use user or check to use the server. Then we can do is we can do const user is gonna be equal to interaction uh, dot user, or sorry, dot options dot get user. And then we can open this up here and then get it by the target, which was what we named the user right here in that user option. So what we can do from there is then we can go ahead and do if a user exists, we can then go ahead and do await interaction dot reply. And then we can, whoops, not a slash here, sorry, uh, dot reply. And then we can go ahead and say uh, username. You can just say a little bit of information based on the user. So we're gonna use the backticks username. And then we can dollar sign open this up here and we can do uh, user dot username. And then what we can do here is if we want to do, let's say the ID, we can do back, backslash from the end to create a new line. ID, open this up and we can do user, uh, user dot ID. Now, if the user didn't exist, that means we didn't state a user. So instead we're just gonna get information based on the person who used the command. So we can do else right here and then we can do await interaction dot reply. And we can open this up and then instead of it being the user, we would do username. Whoops, username is gonna be then set to dollar sign, open this up. We do interaction dot user dot username right here. And then if we wanted to make a new line here for the ID, we can then say your ID is then going to be equal to uh, dollar sign open this up interaction dot user dot ID and then we can go ahead and end that with a semicolon right there now if we were to use the server portion then we could do await interaction dot reply and then we can go ahead and say server name and we actually have to use this in the back text here server server name is the we could open this up with a dollar sign some brackets right here we can then say interaction dot guild dot name and then we can go ahead and say total uh, members is going to be and then we can open this up here with a dollar sign some brackets we can do interaction dot whoops uh, I spelled that wrong interaction dot guild dot member count whoops got oh my dot member count this is gonna go ahead and get the number of members that are in the server, and then we're pretty much good to go. So we can end that with the semicolon right here. We can go up to file, save all. So just to go over this once again, if you guys don't completely understand how subcommands work, basically if you were to have no subcommands and you were just to run a basic command, like the ping command here, what it's doing is it's then just executing what's in the brackets here. We're not checking for any subcommands. You can't pass in any subcommands because we didn't add it to this data portion here. The data portion is basically telling us what is going to be included in our command or what can be included in our command. So opposed to the info command here, we have this portion that we actually use the method add sub command. And then for that sub command, we're setting a name for it. We're setting a description for it. And then we're also adding in this sub command that we can mention a user. We're naming that user so then we can get it later in case we need it, which we do in this case. And then we can also add a description of the user. What is that user going to be used for? Um, basically, what is the user in general? Now, there isn't too much documentation for the slash command builders for the time being, besides the discord.js guide, which I will have links in the description below, which I pulled up earlier and showed you guys the builders portion. Um, maybe they'll have some more documentation in the future for this. I hope they do, because it was a little bit of a struggle understanding this for me at the beginning. If you guys have any issues with this, I recommend you guys join the discord server, but um, yeah, this is pretty simple to use once you get your head wrapped around it. Slash commands are really cool and really interesting. We're going to be using them a lot more here in the series. But this is how you add sub commands to that portion of it. And then when you get it, you're going to use the interaction.options.get sub command method to then go ahead and get whichever sub command was being used. 
And now that's if it was being used. If it wasn't being used, you could then just do an else and say, um, await interaction dot reply. And then we can go ahead and say here, um, no sub command was used. We can end that with a semicolon right here. Now, before we actually go ahead and run our bot here, I realized we have a little issue. I added a bracket on the end opposed to closing the dot set name property. So then we can actually then go ahead and set the description. So you guys just want to change that up right there. Um, another thing is, is I named this, uh, yeah, get sub command. Sorry, where is it here? Uh, get sub command, get sub command is uh, supposed to be lowercase here. You're not actually supposed to be getting it with an uppercase C. So we're going to go ahead and replace this method right here. So we don't get an error. And then we should be pretty much good to go. If we got the file, save all, then terminal, new terminal, and we go npm run test. We should be able to go ahead and serve a bot connected to the Discord server and register our slash commands. And if you guys use the last episode, it connects to the database. Over in the Discord server here, you guys can see if I were to do slash info, it gives us the option for the server sub command or the user. We're gonna go ahead and use the server first. We're gonna hit enter. It's then gonna go ahead and say the server name is the testing server with a total of three members, which uh, as you guys can see here, there is three members in the server. Now, if we were to go ahead and use the user portion info on a user, um, we did two things when we asked for a user. So if we didn't state anybody and I were to go ahead and return it, it would just get the person who used the command. So in this case, my username and my ID is right here. Then if we were to go ahead and state somebody with this, you guys can see it gives us the option for a target and it gives us that little description that we inputted right there. Hopefully my webcam isn't blocking it for you guys here. And in this case, it is a little bit. So I'll just go ahead and move that up so you guys can see it right there. You guys can see our little options right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back. So anyways, what we can do now is go ahead and use this user portion. And as you guys seen before, it returned if we didn't mention somebody just with the person who used it. We can go ahead and use it once again and then mention somebody like the testing bot itself by putting an at symbol and then doing that. Hitting enter and then it's gonna return the username for the testing bot along with the ID for the testing bot. And just to be sure that's the ID, we can go ahead and copy it and even ping it by ID by doing it just like that. And you guys can see that it returns with the testing bot right here. If you guys enjoyed this video on how to make sub commands for your Discord bot in Discord just version 13, slap like button on this video, especially if it worked for you. Comment down below what you guys wanna see next here in the series. If you had any issues, once again, you guys can join the Discord server linked down below in the description. You guys are gonna need to get level five within the server to get some support, but that's not long to get. It's a couple hundred messages. Besides that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.